The following program may contain language of an adult nature. Listener discretion is advised. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Alt or Radio dot net. We think it's the uh, banning of we are anonymous. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody. My boy Maxwell Silver Hammer and my bottom bitch Nerf Man will set you straight with some good all true shit and none of the shit that hurts me. Hey Maxi baby, I still got them videos. You fill my cereal port perfectly. Bitch. Ah uh, yes! Finally kick those fuckers off the air! It's about goddamn time I got sick of those fucks. Yeah, that G.J. Jerkman and Maxwell Silverhammer with all their goddamn co- anti you know what? talk. I'm, I'm, I'm just be happy. We're gonna go celebrate right now. Oh. I think we should go do some golf and butt fuck one another. Oh, that's the greatest. I'm ready. Hold on. Uh, go get in the car here. Get the hell away the other side. Another side. There we go. There we go. This is a great day. <laughs> I'm gonna start it up now. You ready? These bastards. Let's go. Yeah. Bora Bora, here we go. It's the Still Radio Show. Maxwell Silverhammer, GJ Jerkman, Cruise Control, and G. Motor. Do you smell fire? I think somebody lit a cigarette. No, it's the hottest radio show on the internet. So keep it locked here from 7 to 9. Because the STEM radio fam, they ahead of their time. And now it's lesson one, man. This is lesson two. No format because they keep it fresh and new. And this is what I call HQ. A hey, whip. You're a musical genius, man. They can't paint it like a face But if the content is making you sick, taste some day quick. And if you think that the jocks are quirky, allow me to introduce you to the shit that all right you sons of fucking bitches welcome to the shit that fucking irks me i'm maxwell silverhammer and on the phone we got the realest cats to ever pick up a microphone havoc and prodigy from mob deep mob deep everybody (laughs) i'm just fucking with you south central cartel scc what's up dudes what's up what it is what it is Man, so good good to have you both on together this time because remember, Prod, we had you on a few years ago um, when you had helicopters yeah. and shit flying around. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, man, what, what's been going on, man, with, you know, with the SEC? I know for a while you guys kind of did some solo stuff, and what's happening now? I mean, basically, man, we still basically doing our separate things, man. We haven't... Uh... We got a couple of little um, beginnings of a, a project for the South Central Cartel, man, that we um, probably going to drop sometime before the year out. And we've been um, piecing together slowly. You, you know, can you guys um, come closer now, Come closer to the phone a little bit? There you go. Yeah, I said we, um, it's basically everybody still finishing up their solo joint. Mm. Havoc working on a solo project that's almost finished. Hmm. Okay. Everybody actually. LV doing one. Have um, Havoc the mouthpiece working on the movie. Oh. You know, I got my solo joint that that I just released, California Classic. Okay. So um, but we have a South Central Cartel project that we've been slowly putting together. That we hopefully we can get it done and finish and release by the end of the year. Hmm. Are you guys uh, now? Are you guys still fighting with Def Jam, or is that over with? No, nah, man, that's a wrap. <laughs> Actually, you know, SDC, we was off of Def Jam in '98. Oh, in '98. Okay. okay, so it's the it's, last album we did with them was called All Day Every Day. Yep. Yep, I uh, remember that album, and actually we're going to play something off that oh, album later. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It just was a whole bunch of politics for years afterwards. That's well, well it's good to hear that the SEC is still together, man. I was actually going to ask you what happened to, like, LV and those guys, you know, that you had done tracks with. Yeah, LV's still around, you know, doing this thing. I mean, we never really, 
everybody for a minute was scattered all over the, um, you know, doing whatever. <clears throat> like Ron said, had moved away for a minute um, to the Bay Area, but he's been back in L.A. for some years now. We all in L.A. right now, and we haven't all got together and just, you know, let's go to the studio and do a brand new album. But, you know, like slowly here and there, we've done a song here and a song there. Okay. So it then added up now to where we got a nice amount of nice joints. And now you're ready to put it all back together and sort of come back SCC, huh? Yeah, we didn't, you know, we don't want to do it unless everybody committed. So while everybody in the midst of doing all these solo projects, it won't be that, you know, everybody won't be committed to the South Central Cartel project if we got, you know, oh, I'm working on this, man. I can only go to the studio on Saturday and do SCC. I want, it, I want everybody to be 100% in it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and that's you know, obviously if you're going to have a, a project, you know, you want everybody to be involved and, and want to give it 100 percent, you know. Yes, sir. So, but uh, well, it, and I see you patched it up with with mouthpiece. But I remember last time you were on, you, you guys, <laughs> it wasn't so nice, man. Man, you know what? Um, yeah. We just decided that we're not going to be doing that internal beefing no more. Right, right. You know, we just said, we just one day we said, forget it. It don't really make no sense for us to all be. I mean, South Central Cartel, at one point in time, we could all be in the club together, and we won't even talk to each other. Oh, wow. You know, so we got to a point where that didn't make no damn sense. Huh. Even you in, in half? Cause so, you guys... you know, we, all, we all good. We all friend, friendly with each other. It ain't no... Even if we had beef, we wouldn't t- <laughs> we wouldn't talk about it in public. Right. You know what I mean? It's like if we got an internal thing, we kind of trying to keep that internal now and not bring it to the public. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's just funny, man. Even I mean, cause... Like this half uh, right now, I can sum that all up in just what three words. We just grew up. <laughs> this is the bottom line. We grew up. Hey, that's and we know that all the negativity is gonna keep us from reaching our goals that we have set for for ourselves. Well, so you... we had to check goals and everything else at the gate and understand that SEC was a combination of six to seven members, and each one of them had a specific thing that they done and they contributed to the group. And that's what made the group run. And when one of those elements were gone, it was just like a car running with a flat tire. You know what I mean? Right, right. So now we just feel with letting all the animosity and the BS go, man, we're just a complete unit. And, you know, we did a show about a week and a half ago. And we haven't done a show in a while as, as, a, as a South Central Cartel unit, but it seemed like all the spark plugs was firing. You know what I mean? Everything just was on point, in place, you know what I mean? So, I mean, man, I I, I project, uh, if not an SEC album, at least an EP. Okay. That's just my project, and I don't know what everybody else thinks. Man, well, it's good. I mean, you and Prod definitely have a great mic chemistry, man. I mean, it sounds like you guys are real close in real life, but I guess (laughs) sometimes that's not the reality, huh? Well, it is the reality when it comes to me and Pride. My mother and, I mean, my father and Pride's mother is brothers and sisters. Oh. Pride is my first cousin. He's my blood cousin. We grew up around each other. We actually used to, uh, when we were young, walk the neighborhood like to McDonald's and downtown selling candy, and we'll just be rapping. And I mean, we was even to the point, we loved Michael Jackson so much, we was doing the Michael Jackson downtown, man. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> We was we was normal. I mean, you know, we we was out there. We had fun. I mean, man, we 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 did the same thing that any other kid growing up did. Man, we bust windows, we threw bottles, we threw rocks. <laughs> we had fun. Me and him. We we we. But we was always hustlers together when we were together. And then, even when Prod was with his friends, his his other friends, and I was with my other friends, we hustled. We it was just us. But mainly, me and him, we stuck together. Man, we did a lot of stuff together. You know, and 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 and. You know, a lot of groups that we were in, you know, Mafia style. We was called Ace MC, MC Ace, Dope and Death. We just got a long history, man. Man. You know, so, yeah, I mean, I was the debonair. He was Casanova. (laughs) Oh, wow. These were your old rap names? We didn't change names. (laughs) 
a few times, man, but I wouldn't change it for nothing along the way because it helped us grow to become what we are today. Do, do you have any of that old music by chance? Now, I, I don't, Pride might have some of that old music, Max. You're going to have to talk to Pride about that. Pride keep everything. Pride probably got about 20, 20, 20 30 terabytes of hard wow. drives just sitting around. Man. He keeps a lot of stuff. I don't know what's on him, but, you know, I'm quite sure we probably can dig something to hold up for you. I would, yeah, I would just like to hear it, man. You know what I'm saying? Just because, you know, once you like an artist, obviously you want to hear their catalog, you know, regardless if it's oh, bedroom yeah, boogies, yeah. you know? I mean, when we, yeah, we got some stuff. Man. Well, I don't know if, if we can find it, but I know it's a few joints that you would have loved. I mean, we had to do a song called Still Water to Run Deep. That was a bang. That was a dope song, man. It kind of like puts you in the mode of a gang, of a, of a what, gangster team? Oh, um, wow. Or more of a Dear Mama, shall I say? Oh. Yeah, musically, Dear Mama, not lyrically. Mm. But, yeah, man, we was we was known for doing them slow tunes and trying to make sense and trying to educate brothers in the neighborhood, like thinking about my brother, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, and, I, and, I, and we always try to make the majority of our videos have some kind of positive effect out on the people or the public, not always negative. Well, you know, uh, you guys were the first gangster rap group that actually had a love song that went somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Cause, yes, we were, gangster love. Yep, exactly. Because <laughs> most gangster groups, remember, that was their thing. Oh, we don't do love songs. We just rap about killing motherfuckers and we hate cops and this yeah. and that. So you guys actually you know, brought another element to the table that was not being talked about in gangster rap prior to that, you know? Yeah, that's the problem with these rap, these gangster rappers. They full of shit. Aha, uh -huh, I know. <laughs> Especially now. That's a lot of bullshit, man. I mean, we, I mean, not to bring say bring this up, but you might when you go to jail, all you see is gangsters in jail for doing stupid shit. When it comes to they they girlfriends or whatever, they don't and gangsters don't love. That's a bunch of BS. <laughs> Most yeah. of them in jail because they in love with the wrong woman and they did something stupid. Right, <laughs> and that's gangster love, you know. And exactly, <laughs> you know it get ugly sometimes. Right, right, man. All that we little hoes is a bunch of bull. Yeah, all <laughs> all um, um, man machismo talking shit. So you know, real spill, no <laughs> doubt about it. Actually, uh, you know, I've never even heard jail prone, man. You guys talk about it on several tracks. Um, but I've never even heard that track. Yeah, that never made an album. We did that. We was working on that was when we was work, working on the original Murder Squad project before we signed that record deal for that project with Def Jam. And Jail Prone is a song. I, I got the song. Nobody never heard it though, but I got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what's funny. You guys, you made it a hit without it ever getting played. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, you know, it'd be great to great to hear that, though, you know, because I know you've mentioned it on several SEC tracks, and I'm like, what is this fucking mythical jail-prone jail, or jail prone track? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we actually got a song called Jail Prone. Man, would love you to know, hear it. It was kind of like um, after we had did County Blues on our first album, it was kind of like a spinoff to County Blues, you know, back in jail again. Like, I keep going back to jail, hmm. you know. But, I mean, I don't know. It didn't make the record. It didn't make the final cut, man. Or it might have been that we had used a sample from, um, from you know, Rick James, Mary Jane on that. It might have been a sample issue oh. back then. Hmm. Yeah, we couldn't get it clear or something. But, I mean, so many people didn't use that since then. I don't know why they wouldn't let us use it. Maybe we was talking too much crap on it. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's <laughs> – I kind of like those kind of tracks personally, but most executives don't. I know how that is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Actually, uh, and have, you've been getting kind of philosophical, man, on your on your Facebook page. Uh, is Are you going to start adding, you know, philosophical and political? you going to start adding that in the music, man? I feel like, man, we are a people that really takes to music. 
And being that that's the outlet that we really, really listen to, because rappers, they listen at vocals. We listen at lyrics before we listen at anything else. And using that outlet, I feel, to touch people or to change people's perception or to get people to see what's going on in America, corporate America, whatever, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my musical outlet to do what I need to do to get the message across. Right. Because we are one. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole thing behind one hood. Hmm. It's worldwide, one hood. It ain't no different hoods and all this up in here, man. We are one people. And that's how we need to keep it across the board. So I'm going to talk it. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to do whatever I can to change the mindset and the perception of the kids that's growing up in this society today to make them see that it's a better way. And we don't have to be out there doing the things that they're doing right now. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well, because you definitely come with some gems on Facebook, man. I'm like, oh, fuck. I wonder if you're going to start dropping this in your music, you know? It's in my music. I got a song coming out on my album called Warfare. And it's talking about everything that's going on from Eric Garner to, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the kid that got shot, the 17-year-old. It's, it's, it's talking about everything. It features me. Uh, one of my tight homies, TSP, you know, for, uh, he got a production company out in, uh, I think it's es- Escondido, Escondido. Mm. Yeah, he works out with Assassin, you know, DJ King Assassin. Then my, my brother, my brother Young Droop is on this cut. And it's, it's a political cut, and, you know, hopefully it get out there and it open up some people's eyes and change some views about what's going on with America in a good way. Right, right. We can all fight and we can all blow up and kill up shit, but the real challenge is to do it in a peaceful way. Right. That's the real challenge and what? still get your point across. Well, you guys have always had tracks like that to a degree, like um, playing in a G's game and, uh, you know, everybody uh, think it over. You know what I'm saying? Tracks like that. Yep. So, you know. Yeah, bring it on, trying to bring them together for the truth. Right, yeah. right. Man. Yeah. So, and we're going to continue to do them because we're not doing it just for a specific pers- I mean, purpose. We're doing that because it's built in us. We're doing it because we lived it. We're doing it because we know that there's a better way. If it wasn't a better way, then we wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? Because I, I lived on 92nd in between Hoover and Figueroa, and I was surrounded by all different sets and bloods. And yeah. any day I stepped out of my house in Pride, too, Pride also, any day we stepped out of our house, it was we, you know, it wasn't guaranteed that we was gonna go back through that door. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy, man, to be able to open up people's eyes about what's going on inside where we live. That the media, mainstream media, whatever, never shed light on. You know what I mean? Mm. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna keep doing it. We gonna always keep coming with them. SCC, Havoc, Pride, Pride, do what Pride do, and Pride is a good storyteller at it when he really gets into his shit. Pride, I'm mean, proud to be honest. A lot of people don't know. Thinking about my brother that was on the album, Pride wrote that song. I, I didn't write a lyric. Oh. I said my verse, you know. But we wanted to keep that song so consistent. And Pride was on such a roll, and I didn't want to change the direction or the meaning. Uh, he just had such a perfect concept. So I said, you know, you write that song, and I just say whatever you want me to say. And that song came out with LV mixed in it. Man, that, that that song that should have been one of our major hits. You think it would have been, <laughs> actually? It should have been. Cause, but you know what? The, the radio's never gonna play. It's kind of funny because I know back then they used to always say, "Oh man, well, you know, you got to have something positive to get it played on the radio." Actually, no, because that would fix the community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that was bullshit. That was contradicting what they were saying. I mean, but you know, for those out there that's listening, I mean, understand that. Groups like South Central Cartel took the hit for a lot of groups that do what they do today. We couldn't say gangster. We couldn't say bitch. We were censored. We right. had to fight through that. It's like we had to take gangster love and take the gangster off and call it you couldn't deal with this. Just for the radio, really, look at it. Video, too, right? We had to change the title for the video because they was on us, our appearance, our look, everything. They didn't, they didn't like that. But Oh, I think we did a good job. We broke through the masses, and today, like I said, we can look back and, you know, I mean, we, me and Pride, we, well, a lot of us in SEC talk to people all day long that say that they, you know, 
love our music and that they used to that we didn't stop them from doing this and that and all this just through our music. So you know, like I said, we're gonna keep educating the public and 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 and, and our family members out there, man, that that seek this education. Because they need to know it. It's knowledge. And, you know, they can also seek it from a brother like you, Mac. You deep in the game. You know the history. Oh, yeah. When they educate themselves and they learn the history, then they can step up and put themselves in the proper place within this game, in this history of rap. You know what I mean? But until you know the history, you don't know shit. Well, and that's the problem, though, man. A lot of kids, and, you know, you and I have talked about this at length on Facebook you know, a lot of these kids don't care about the history at all. They just want to be rappers and be out there, and they fucking have no clue of what they're doing or where they're going. And that's exactly why the rap game is where it is now. Because these people out here, these niggas, young niggas, whatever they are, that don't have no respect for the game and what we've built, you have to slap in the face to the pioneers of this. When we were coming up at South Central Cartel, we dare let it come out of our mouth, we don't like Run DMC, Curtis Blow ain't this, or Fat Boy Suck, but you know what I mean? <laughs> These are pioneers of the game that came up be- before us who we're, who set trends that we follow. It didn't matter where they were from, but because they were the pioneers at that time, and it wasn't our era, as we came up, we showed them much love, much respect. When we was in sp- places and people like who? Who would I say? Like, we seen Big Mike. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He came and got down on the mic. It's all love. It's nothing but pure D respect. And when these young cats in this day and age reciprocate that like we did, then you will see a, the game change. But until then, all you're seeing is, 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 is niggas with their egos sitting on their shoulders and they feel like they're doing it. They don't have to answer to the legacy of rap. Then, you know, at some point they're going to fall off. And this game is going to 360. Yeah. Actually, it's 360. <laughs> it's already Right there. now as we speak. Yeah. Well, and because they think, you know, oh, I'm on the internet. I'll be the next Rebecca Black or whatever. You know, I got a SoundCloud, exactly. you know. so Exactly. <laughs> you got a SoundCloud, but you ain't sold one CD. You ain't even copper. So, you know what I mean? It's to the points, man, people don't even look at, at, at plaques no more. Like, you know how me and Pro, we can walk in our house and look on the wall and see a gold plaque or, you know, a platinum plaque from somewhere. And we, we love that. That's, that's, that's documentation of what we did in the game. Right, right. These rappers nowadays can't even do that. But they claim it to be the hardest rappers out there. <laughs> I say if you ain't a song maker, you ain't shit. Well, and I'm sure you got people on your friends list it's kind of weird, too, because obviously they've added you, but they really don't know your music, and they're tagging you and everything. No, they don't. <laughs> wow. How does that feel? They don't, but you know what, Max? The way we put it out there, I don't, you, I'm don't. i hoping you agree with me, is that's just like when Run DMC was coming up. I loved Run DMC. When I wanted to know something about Run DMC, who the members was, where they were from, you know what I'm saying? What they like to wear, what they want to eat, or what they performing at the next two, two, you know, cities or whatever. I go and I research that information. Oh yeah. So, to the fans, the information is out there. The history of rap is out there. If you're a real true hip hop fan, go research it, look it, look it up, read it, and then respect it, and then you will have a different outlook on what the game is and what the game is about. The game is about culture. It ain't about gangbanging. It ain't about none of that. It's about our culture. It's what we love to do. If you're sitting outside on the corner and there's two people across the street and they beating on trash cans, you hear that beat. It's something about beats and music that, that you know what I'm saying? Right. When you feel it and you hear it, it's, it, it, it just makes you feel good. Oh, absolutely. It makes you happy. It makes you want to get up and dance if that beat is driving the way that you like it to drive. Move your head. Right, right. Well, then Music that's it. Is a, blessing. <laughs> a lot of stuff now doesn't move me. I mean, I try, man. I try to listen to it, but I can't. It just doesn't make me get moving like some of the old shit did, you know? Because it's bullshit watered down. And they trying to make it. They trying to brainwash us with it, but real people are not going to be brainwashed with that old lollygag. Uh, what they call that? Uh, fairy tale. Uh, uh, what they Tra- call them things? Nursery rhymes. Yeah. 
Well, uh, I mean, I want to hear him talk about something. I'm tired of hearing people talk about, you know, um, 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 they go around their neck and how drunk they are. They popping <laughs> mollies, all that. I mean, come on, man, with a thinking about my brother, with a G's gang. Say something to me. Right, right. Exactly. I'm just talking. I'm tired of hearing y'all just making songs just to make songs, and you have no concept. You're just out there rapping. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, somebody sitting in a car. Just, you know, with the radio on, not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> your stuff is actually that's the car. It is. <laughs> it's the car that's moving, you, you know? know? I want to be in the car. I want to roll the window down and cruise. Exactly. Exactly. Drive you it. You know, and, 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 and maybe do something else. But, <laughs> but you know, the, the, these rappers nowadays, see, I mean, I think the game would be totally different. It's just my opinion. If these little young cats would respect the ones before them. Then they can learn something, you know. But until they do that, we gonna all we gonna be at odds like this. But like again, the game is gonna three sixty, and they gonna see themselves on the way out, which that's what's happening now. <laughs> and some haven't so, even uh, gotten you know, anywhere. I mean, everybody has their moments, right? Uh, oh it, yeah. It, everything's a phase, it's just like afros. They come in and leave, come back. It's like jerry curls. How many times they didn't left and came back? It's just a different <laughs> style of way they do it. People put jerry curls in their head and put the plaits. Yeah. But they still got a jerry curl. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Everything comes back full circle. Yeah. And right now, real hip-hop is on its way back. So you believe in it. You you don't think that it's completely dead and, and that's it, huh? Nah, nah, because, you know, what, what, what they say, what guys say, have faith the size of a mustard seed, and that's all you need. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I have faith that this game ain't going nowhere, that it ain't dead. And well, we're going to show them. It's just a way that you got to maneuver and deal with it now. You know, how you got to do your business within the game now. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, I wanted to jump into some music real quick, man. Um, I wanted to jump in, and let's, before we jump into, before we play this, uh, I want to jump into Family Thing, which uh, is a track you did with. Uh, Trip, well, I think the guy's name is Trip, Trip Loke or something like that, the or the twins. Trip Loke. Trip Loke, yeah. Family thing, no. Nope. Family thing is on all day, every day, and that's the song. I mean, I I produced that song, I lo- and um, yeah, I, I did the music on that song, and that was more or less like our family. That's me, Pride, Young Pride, uh, my cousin, Young Pride's brother, twin, my brother, Young Drew. Who else? Evil Scheme. One one thing scheme on there, but it's more or less like it was a fa- it, it was more or less like we put all the family on the track. Yeah, it's like Pride and his two brothers and m- me and my brother. We did a song called Family Thing because we that you know really that was really the focus on. I'm thinking, man, like uh, what was that like? We was trying to push that like the group, the uh, Twin and Nike. And then Young Proud and Scheme was doing a solo, but it was just Young Proud on that song. But, yeah, Family Thing was more or less just me, Proud, just our family. It was no outsiders. It was like blood, the bloodline. Right. That's all it was. Well, the one it's dude the on there, one cat rapping on there actually reminds me of X-Rated, man. His style is very similar. I, I really like, I, I don't know who that is. It might be Twin. It might be Trip. I don't know. I got to see. It might be my brother. You might be talking about Drew. That might be Drew. But it could be twin. Which one? You mean when? You know, whichever one. Um, after you play it, let me know which one they were. I, first, second, third, or fourth. I we'll, will. We'll, we'll. 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 Some light on it. All right, because I definitely. I, I'm. In, I really liked his his style, man. So here we go. We're gonna jump in the family thing. You guys hold on to us or hold on with us, and we'll be right back to talk to you some more. Metro, and down my still 
got payments on this motherfucker. I lost all the hubcaps and the homies I don't trust. I got your back if these niggas start tricks. When I got your back too, if it's more than two. And if it's more than three, they gotta fuck with me. And that's how it's gonna swing with this family thing. And you know I got your back if these niggas start tricks. And I got your back too, if it's more than two. And if it's more than three, they gotta fuck with me. And yo, that's how it's gonna swing with this family thing. Y'all niggas kill, feel me down when you up around. Clown me, down me when your ass not up around. Now, tell me, G, who's the fucking play you hater? Mad cause I put my family up on some paper. My homie Joe gave me the foe on your bitch ass. Hey, goof, I got your back, though, so won't you put the smash? Down, clowns like you I call haters. Mad cause you jockers, but still can't play. It's young Drake on the creep as I tips down main. Ain't got nothing to lose but 50 G to gain if I maintain a low profile like a Pirelli. Cause niggas be scheming like evil side and wicked dreaming. Night after night, be having a nigga straight plotting like Oliver Stone. Out to get it, rip up his zone. If it's on, it ain't no faking niggas out for the taking. But if they come at me wrong, rat that tat ain't no gift. Twin and you, I got your back if the niggas start trip. But I got your back too. And if it's more than three, they gotta fuck with me. And that's how we gon' swing with this family thing. In the cut, I got your back if them niggas start crit. Big Rod, I got your back too if it's more than two. And if it's more than three, they gotta fuck with me. And that's how we gon' swing with this family thing. Now from the gate, I got the skate. Block the block when I'm swerving. Puffing up on that urban steel down for curb serving. Cutlass, old deck, niggas trip. I'm a winner. Khakis and Chuck T's, gold D's as I bit the niggas block. Batteries hot. In a 40, go, rhyme sun, back in heat, and it's on, niggas, play a hatin', cause I stack the chip, dippin' in the sea, low, putting my bang down, I with my hands, fast fast fast. Fast. so damn down, I used to figure, but now I'm hearing shit, it makes me wanna pull a trigger, nigga, I put you down when you had Nathan, nigga, but now I'm hearing about your player hate, rollin' in my low, low, 64 low, with my kinfo, fake ass lopes, they get smoked, so, we still beat, we be tight like vice grips, collectin' chips, dumpin' Got your back too if <laughs> when it's more than two. Anyway, you know who it is? It, it's young Droop, man. That's who I like on there. Oh, they're yeah, listening to it. Young Droop, that's my brother. Young Droop. Okay, he is raw, man. What what's he been up to? Is he still is he still at it or what? Actually, man, to be honest, my 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 brother did an album with Havoc the Mouthpiece up on the Havoc the Mouthpiece situation. And really? um it's called, what is this album called? The Game Changer? Called, I don't even know what my brother's album is called right now, but he coming out, his album coming out. And he on my album. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he, 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 he he's going to be something to reckon with. So, so he has nothing out as of yet? No, he has one. He has a, he has a little single out in a video called Trap Star. Trap star. Okay. Well, I may look for that. Yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube. Okay, and it's Young Droop, right? Uh, we no, lose? If You Ain't Talking Money. What happened? It's called If You Ain't Talking Money. That's if, what it is, Max. I'm sorry. If You Ain't Talking Money. Okay, by Young Droop. Okay. Yeah, If You Ain't Talking Money. Okay. All right. I will definitely check him out because, like I said, he puts me in mind. Check him out. If you need it, um, hit me. You have my info, Max. I can, I, I'll get it and shoot it to you. You don't have to search like that. Oh, I, mean, okay. I can get it for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I, I like his, his, you know, I like his flow, man. He puts me in mind of uh, X-Rated, actually. So. Yeah, he been, he, I mean, I remember when my brother first started rapping. We was at Kitchen Sink recording our first album. Huh. And he came in there and he said he wanted to rap, but he didn't know how to write. So he asked me to write his first rap. Wow. So I wrote his first rap. It didn't make the album. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when he that's when he felt, I guess, he felt that he wanted to be part of the rap game and get in this music business. 
Well, ever since then, you know, he's been writing his own rap. He write them. He, it's on him. Everything that he say, he write. He's uh, really taken and ran with it, man. I mean, you know, after that, it's you could tell he he can he feels his music. He does a good job. You know, when he's his delivery, his flow, his lyrics, everything. Man, you told that's Havoc brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, man, you got some. Some don't always uh, match up. You know what I'm saying? Some some are good and some. Yeah, are- <laughs> exactly. You right. That's true. Yep, that's my brother, man, Young Drew. He gonna be hitting the scene soon. Man. Just watch him on uh, the Game Changer uh, situation. Okay. Okay. Coming. That's so. That's his new album. It's gonna be called the Game Changer, huh? I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know the title of his album. I thought that's what it was, but pride is correcting me to a certain extent. So <laughs> before I speak wrongfully, right. I'll call him up and I'll get it. And the next time we talk, you'll you have all that info. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, speaking of uh, X-rated and all that, man, uh, and you put this on Facebook, so I figure I can ask you guys about it. What happened with you and Lynch? There was a club situation, man, and Lynch kind of busted out on you, man. Man, we was we had went up to uh, it was me, Pride, DJ Grip, and we had uh, our manager's son with us. He was like our road manager, doing road manager stuff. We went up to Sacramento to do a show, and you know we came in. I mean, the house was kind of packed, man. But when we came in, man, we instantly met Lynch, huh? And, we, you know, we were sitting there talking, and the man was shaking in his boots. I'm just being honest, man. I'm not lying. He, he felt like the whole club was there to bang on him when he get on the stage. And he was asking the SEC to ride with him. And we were saying, we'll hold your back, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but when he got on the stage and performed, <laughs> they didn't do nothing to him. They actually partied with him. You know, I mean, it was nothing but um, bloods in the house. Huh. But they actually partied with him. But when the SEC got on the stage, <laughs> I think they were there for us. So oh. they went off on us. They didn't let us finish our set, no nothing. And we was looking for a brother like Lynch Hung to be there with us. And Lynch Hung had bounced out and hit the corner. Wow. And ever since then, I told him I was going to make that known that he punked out and he left. How you going to ask SEC to hold your back, but then when shit get funky, you bounce out and run and then leave us fucked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, me and Pro, we did what we SEC going to do. We going to always do. We walked out. We kept our head high. We stuck our chests out. We didn't talk shit. We just walked out, being the humble people we are. You right. know, if they didn't want the show, they didn't want the show. But, you know, Lynch Hung, that wasn't no cool thing to do after you ask somebody to hold your fade, and then you bounce on them when, 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 when the situation gets thick. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what we. That's what I call a bitch nigga. Yeah. But you know, I mean, to this day, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why he left. I've never talked to him. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, maybe that's a, 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 a talk me and him going to have at some point. You know what I'm saying? It's not no, I don't hate him, but I don't like what he did. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's definitely, yeah. You, you would never trust him again, obviously, in a situation like exactly. that. Exactly. Hard to trust people who do that to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's just funny, man, because, you know, this is like the back story. You know, you hear a lot. You listen to Lynch's album. You're thinking, oh, Garden Block Gang, the dude's real, man. He lived in it. And then we hear a story like that, and you're like, oh, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm not I'm not like, I'm Havoc, man. I don't, uh, I don't get on radio shows and records and say stuff about people that sabotage their career. I support people. People, no matter what color they are, race they are, if they if you doing what you love, I'm gonna support it as right. long as you happy. But still, there's a level of some things that you just don't do, especially in the rap game. You know what I mean? Right. And we have been privy to experience that on two more other occasions. I'm not even gonna speak on, but you know. We have never been like that, man. And, you know, like I always tell people, no matter where we performed at, no matter what state we was in, what country was in, you never heard nobody get shot behind an SEC show. You never heard nobody get their ass whooped at an SEC show. There's no violence ever broke out of the SEC show. And I say to today, why the media don't promote that? Of course not. Oh, do I hear a helicopter in the background again? 
<laughs> no, last time we had Prod on, I swear to God, there were helicopters and sirens and shit. It was really authentic. So, you know, it's like not only is SCC authentic on their records, but they're also authentic on their radio interviews, too. <laughs> you know? We authentic everywhere. That's like that video, G's on the Move video, the Havoc and Prodigy album. That little one thing that happened, that shooting scene, that happened. That was real? That actually went down and was just happened to be caught on tape. That was a live scene that was unexpected. So it's real out here. Every, you, Max, you know it's real out here in these streets. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's just funny, though. You happen it's to catch... So, oh, <laughs> That's yeah, like, SEC. We didn't get. We don't get on records uh, telling stuff to people that ain't happening. Whatever we saying, it happened, or we've been in it. You know right. what I mean? So you know, we're not no fairy tale gangsters and none of that stuff. We actually been in the streets. We actually did some of the things that we talk about. Or if we didn't do it, we saw it. So we we real. We one hundred. We ain't trying to say everybody else is fake. But you know, I'm like this, man. If you got a, if you if if, if you got a Honda, don't say you got a Chrysler. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm and your rap is real. If you roll in a Honda Accord and say you dipping in your Honda Accord, not in your BMW. Because <laughs> when we see you in the street, the first thing I'm gonna say is where your BMW. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that, man. Obviously, a lot of cats will make up shit. You know what about that? Uh, yeah. What about Murder Squad, man? What, are you guys ever gonna make you know bring everybody together and do a Murder Squad album again, or what, what's going on with that? Uh, uh, Murder Squad thing was, I mean, we all had a hand in it, but it was more or less like a mouthpiece prodigy baby. You oh. know what I mean? I supported it one hundred percent. I was a major player in it, but it was more a prodigy and mouthpiece baby. Pro produced it. Other producers stepped in um, and, and did some stuff on it. But I'll let Pry fill y'all in on that Murder Squad album because that Murder Squad album, it was a nice piece. It right. was. It was. Man, what, what, tell us about the, mur the Murder Squad thing and how that even came about, Pry. Actually, man, to be honest with you, I was just the producer on that joint. Mouthpiece, that was his baby. <laughs> that was Mouthpiece's baby, man. Um, it started off, like I said when before, because when we was talking about the Jail Prone song, we had started doing the Murder Squad album, and it was basically all of our cliques, everybody that was affiliated with us, and all of the outside groups, you know, because we always had the Ron Poetic Mafia with us, which was the Latino side of our group, you know, Jill and Ace. Right. And then, you know, we had several other groups around that I might have been producing at the time, or, you know, some people that Havoc was trying to, put on GWK at the time, and then we just basically, and you know, just people that was with us from the gate that were in the music business that was rappers, that we didn't make them a part of the South Central Cartel, but they was with us from the beginning, you know what I mean? So the Murder Squad was just all of us together, and we started that album right, actually we started it, I think, right after we had did the, um... Havoc and Prodigy first album. Then we went in and started on the Murder Squad, and we just ended up putting that into the situation. I mean, Havoc went and got a deal with, with Russell Simmons for that joint. But, you know, that was um, something that Havoc, the mouthpiece, was doing. And, you know, of course, I was at the time the main producer in our clique at that particular time, so I had a lot of tracks on it. Well, you got Ice T. I don't know. I doubt if there'll ever be another Murder Squad record. Oh, oh I, I mean, I, you can never say never, but I really don't see it because everybody is so spread out now, and it's not, you know, it ain't like one. Back then, it was pretty much South Central Cartel, and anything else kind of fell behind that, but it was still a close knit right. crew of, of, of artists. Now it's like more spread out, and um, everybody got their own record labels. Thanks to the way that the business is now with the internet and all that, everybody feel like they can produce and distribute their own projects. So it's harder to bring those kind of artists together nowadays. Well, you had some big names on there, man. You had Ice-T, Spice One, Tretch. You know, these were big players, right. man. Yeah, we had people that we used to fool with that, that was around us a lot. That we would do, um, you know, like we would call Ice T. You know, I mean, I don't know. By default, Ice T was kind of like somebody that that I was around even in my younger years before I even had a record deal. 
and I just was making my rounds trying to get put on, I ended up wearing iced tea quite often. You know what I mean? So, you know, and plus I admired Ice T. So when the situation came around and we was in a position where we could, and, you know, because I was connected to him through friends that, that worked with him. So, and DJ Ace from the Ron Pettig Mafia was connected to him. So it was a no brainer to get Ice on whatever we can get him on. So we would always call him when we was doing any kind of a posse type of cut. You know what I mean? Like he was on No Peace. He was on um, Gangsta Team. The Gangsta Team. You know what I mean? Right. We, we would call, reach out to Ice, and you know he came through. And he was a damn icon, so it was always a blessing to get him on anything. Right, right. Oh, you had Spice Tress One. Tress was the homie. You know what I mean? Tress was the homie. And, um, you know, so it wasn't hard for us to get that guy to come and bless us. You know, MC8. You know, another one that was around, we was around him quite often because we had the same manager. Oh. Oh, Spice that's right. Like same situation. We was around Spice from our career started together. <laughs> FCC and Spice One, we, we basically started together. Oh. So, well, I know you guys, you did shit on Spice's album, too. Um, you know, you guys had that uh, yeah, we, 380. we did. I produced a couple joints on his second album. And we did the 380 on that ass on the second album. That's my shit. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, we was, we, you know, like I say, we, when we was out on our first promo tour, Spice wasn't on the promo tour with us, but the guy that took us out on promo tour, Arby Taylor, he, he wasn't managing me, but he was promoting Spice's first album. So me and Havoc was on Spice One first album from the gate. Wow. You know, that shit was ridiculous, man. That was some of the dopest shit on the streets at the time. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's just all these cats, a lot of these cats that we didn't rap with through the years is cats that we actually used to fool with back then. You know, the Ant Banks and all these cats. It was mutual respect there. Right, right. Well, shit, you even had you know, Tupac so, you know, we on kinda, some shit. I like to mess with cats that's real like that. Even like the way Tupac ended up on 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 the gangster team, it just was like on some mutual respect type shit. Yeah, yeah. So he just you know he ended up in the studio with us, and he wasn't leaving without getting on that song. <laughs> that's just how he was. He was not gonna leave without getting on it. Man. And same with Big Mike, I guess, he huh? He seen everybody that was finna be on it, and he was like, I know y'all don't think I'm leaving without getting on it. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, because... That's it, basically how it happened. That's uh, that's how the gangster team ha had uh, sort of assembled from there, huh? Yeah, well, we already had, like, the usual suspects. We had Aid in there. We had Ice-T in there. Of course, Spice One was going to be in there. And Spice One came through the door with, with Tupac. Oh, Tupac oh. was with Spice when Spice came. And Pac seen Ice T and them in there writing. And I, his Pac was like, what's this? You know? Huh. He was like, man, I know y'all ain't trying to do this without me. And he in five minutes, dude was on the mic. You know, actually... Actually, a dude I'm surprised that didn't end up on the Murder Squad album, and you guys did do a track on that Strictly Streets album for the compilation, is a guy named Chunk from East Palo Alto. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, he just wasn't there that day. You know what I mean? Like, that was one of them songs, man. We, of course, had, like I said, the usual suspects, but then... So, you know, Tupac, the only one that wasn't on the um, list already, it wouldn't, he wouldn't have been, it would have just been the usual one. But, you know, he came through and he was just the only extra head. But that was one of the songs that just came together, like, kind of fast. Right. Man. Yeah, then, you know, we did Knock on Wood, which, which was J.O. and uh, Gangsta Dreyster. Gangsta Dreyster, BG Knockout and Dreyster and um, J.O. And um, um, Shaquilla and Gripster, you know, and, and you know, it's like, man, you, the Dreyster and the, um, the BG Knockout and Dreyster, of course, was, it was, a, they was label mates of ours. Oh. And we, you know, we just was tight through events, meeting them at events and, you know, like things like that. And it just was cool. You know, they was cool folks, you know, and we had to get them down. We had to get down on a joint with them because at that time they was real hot in the streets just like us. Right, right. And of course, J.O. too. Oh yeah, yeah. And and well, you had others on there. Obviously, we could go through all different names. 
What happened? What was yeah, the? Yeah, of course. What was the Young Murder Squad? What, that how did that come about? Young Murder Squad was the little youngsters that Young Pi was running with, um, in the hood. You know, from the from the neighborhood. You, you know, the little cats that was running with Young Pi. His because Young Pi was coming up. You mm-hmm. know, at the time, and he had a, a little crew that was with him. Little talented crew of cats that was with him. The Young Murder Squad was some cats that grew up around the neighborhood where, you know, where I met Havoc at on the west side. And, um, you know, that's they ended up signing to Havoc's label. That was the first group that Havoc released outside of the South Central Cartel. You know, when he got his distribution deal with Priority, he did the Young Murder Squad on GWK Records. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So that's you know, of course he named them Young Murder Squad because he already had the Murder Squad situation. So he named them Young Murder Squad just so he can take the momentum and, and kind of um, use that to catapult them out there. Hmm. And right, what happened to those guys? We don't hear much from them anymore. Oh, man, you know business, politics. I mean, <laughs> business and politics. That's all I can tell you, man. Business and politics. Everybody, you know, it's like in this music business, man, somebody put a record out, and you may think that record sold a lot of units. Or, or some, yeah, I think the Young Murder Squad did pretty, pretty decent. You know what I mean? But maybe more decent than what people, than what they thought. I don't know. It just was business between mouthpiece and them. That's right. all I could say, because I don't really know the specifics. Hmm. So... Yeah. That's after Just that. Our they, politics came into play, and it, it it destroyed that whole thing. Them and just the Shaquilla right. um, situation, all of that, man. Wow. Well, you know, there was a chick. South that, Central Cartel got caught up in that shit, too. <laughs> yeah, you of know, course. Just, <laughs> yeah, the politics of, you know, the music business, man. You know, there was a chick that rapped on South Central Madness, and she was the one that said, I'll smoke you and leave you dead with your dick on hard. What happened to her? I don't... KT. <laughs> yeah, what happened to her? Where is she at now? Uh, she, I think she's a school teacher in San Diego. <laughs> oh, wow. <Yeah. laughs> That's quite a career change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, man, I hate to say it because, you know, 24 KT, that's my girl. You know, I liked her. But it was a situation where, you know, you know, I ain't going to even go there, man. Cause, you know, it just said that was somebody that Havoc took a liking to, the mouthpiece. Oh. And, you know, he tend to make stars out of females that he take a liking to. Uh-oh, mixing business I'm gonna with pleasure. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> mixing business with pleasure, huh? Yeah, pretty much. And she had a little little, little talent, and we was able to take that and, and get a couple of nice verses out of her, you know. <laughs> Actually, she had a few decent songs. Well, huh. you know, if you if your whole reason for for the season is you trying to get the draws, you know what I mean. When that play out, then the career is over for the person that you was chasing. Right, right. That's basically what happened, you know. I'll tell you in what. In a nutshell, I'm never gonna be able to listen to that song again without thinking San Diego school teacher. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> this this chick. I mean, she's just doing her first love, her real passion. Yeah, oh, oh, I feel it, man. It was I, never the music. <laughs> but just the fact that she said, I'll smoke you, leave your dead with your dick on hard. And now she's probably talking to first graders. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and she came up with that herself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that line, dude. That line dude, just. We didn't have nothing to do with that lyric. <laughs> you made like a popsicle. <laughs> yep, that's the line. <laughs> but it's yeah, one of the. That girl was a. She came up with a couple of nice ones. Yeah, I only heard her on one track, I think. It was just on that, but I never heard that her. That was the only one that anybody heard. She had a few that didn't make it out there. That was decent. Wow. Wow. It would be interesting to hear some of the other tracks she did, like maybe some solo tracks, you know? Yeah, you know, but she wasn't really, she wasn't really trying to do it. That wasn't really her passion. She wasn't really trying to be no rapper. It was just she had an opportunity to do it, and she took advantage of it. Uh-huh. And ha- One of them situations. Now, she killed her from the bay. Now, she was really a rapper. Right, right. What happened to her? She was full throttle in it. 
<laughs> what happened to her? You don't hear her anymore. Uh, you know, that's business, man. She's in North Carolina, I think. Carolina. You know, she in North Carolina. She's into the Christian rap now. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a career change, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, but you know, once again, man, politics, business, things didn't go as planned. And, um, you know, it's a lot of um, people that get that get sidetracked when certain things go go bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I understand. A lot of careers get derailed by certain business moves that don't pan out. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know what? I, I got so a that's what happened. I got a question for Hav, man, because we're about to jump into another track, and I, I got to ask Havoc about this one. Now, th- okay. this is that. This is that. <laughs> This, Th- this is this is that Buckham Buckham track, and that you did with I, I think uh-huh. the herd. Well, how's that pronounced, dude? Heard it posse, heard didn't posse. That's them um, guys out in. Um, <laughs> how that came about? Let me explain. That. Oh yeah, please. We had did that. Oh, me, Prod, and Assassin. Mm. And then Assassin came to me because Assassin produced that joint. And that, and he came to me and said that these cats wanted to talk to me about doing an album with them, but the way that they wanted to do it was rap on some of the joints that was on the album, not take them off. They just wanted to add their voice on a couple of the joints. Oh. And they was from Germany, actually yeah. Germany. Mm-hmm. So but they from Germany, right? Right. And uh. He presented me with that, and we did it, and that's how they got on that song. It was like a remake, a remake, because the original version is me, Pride, and Assassin, right? Right, right. Fuck em, fuck em. Yeah, it, it's... Yeah, me, Pride, and Assassin. That's how that song, that's how they got on that song, but they're from Germany. They're cool people. And this is DJ Assassin from um, San Jose, right? Okay. DJ King Assassin. Yep. Okay, because yeah, I was wondering, because you're talking about Cali on this shit, and all of a sudden you got these dudes who come in. Well, actually, it's a dude and a chick, and they're rapping in German. Yeah. And I'm like, well, they're a long yeah. way from Cali, man. What the fuck? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's how it was more or less supposed to be a project that they did out there, you know, that they presented out there. Okay. But, Okay. But some kind of way it trickled over here. I don't know. You can't stop music. You know <laughs> what I mean? You can't stop it from spreading the growth. Right, right. So, so they, they put their... Vo- that's one of those things that just happened without a lot of detailed thought. You know, it was something that came up. Let's do it. Okay, let's right. do it. We're going to jump into it, man. This is Buckham Buckham. You know, Havoc, DJ King Assassin, and Herndon Posse. I don't know how to fucking pronounce that, but... <laughs> 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 anyway, here we go. Buckham Buckham. Oh shit, it won't play. <laughs> Go figure, it won't fucking play. <laughs> Hold on. He's gonna mess around with it for a minute, see if we can get it. It just oh it just encountered a it must be an extension on it or some shit. Oh yeah, oh you know what it was? I know what it was. That's my fault. Fuck, we can't even play that song, man. That's okay. It's my fault. That's how I how, how I grabbed it, how, how I downloaded it. All right, the next track then we're going to jump into is uh, w- was, it's Havoc and Prodigy. Um, see, when my homie, or not when my homies call. <laughs> it's off the Kicking Game album, man. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to let this play. Hopefully if this will play. <laughs> that won't play either? These motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. I just love technology. <laughs> All right, so we got two tracks that will not play. It's my fault, man. It's the it's the way I downloaded them, because uh, my shit can play M4As, his cannot. Uh, yeah, I know. That's why. That's that's my fault. Okay. Um. Well, then we're gonna we're gonna play this track. Then God, I feel stupid. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah okay. So well, let's maybe we're just gonna reset some shit. Maybe because nothing seems like it wants to play. <laughs> Go figure. You guys got to love this shit, right? I'm sure you guys run into that all the time. In the studio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where things won't work and won't do what they're Good supposed news. to. <laughs> Those are common occurrences with uh, with music. So, um, yep. man. Era, era. 
Well, but now um, with, with this uh, thing you were talking about with like the Buckham Buckham track and, and whatnot, did do they do all the songs like that, or or is it just you guys on that one track? No, nah, they did a few songs like that. It's not the whole album. They did a few songs like that. Okay, okay. They just they they took it, wrote their raps in German, and they spit them. Oh wow! I think I, I have one copy of that album. That's all I was. I never opened it. Huh. Because it was the only copy that I received, I was supposed to get more, but I really never really listened. Wow. Uh, yes, yeah, it is. I it's called Buckham Buckham. Copy, and you know, I try to keep that like memorabilia stuff like that. Right, right. That's man. Well, you know, you kind of have to because you know it's a part of your resume. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, 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 I I'm actually since you bringing it up, actually gonna go and 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 then pull the album up, even if I gotta go and get it from uh, you know Assassin now. Right, I'll get it, man, and listen at it. So the next time you ask me about that, I can give you some straight, straight, <laughs> straight fact. talk on that, huh? Well, you know, I threw you a curveball, and that's usually what I do. Yeah, you threw me a hell of a curve, Max. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I do, man. Nothing's ever I, – I fly by the seat of my pants, man. Everything is, um, you know, I don't script anything. It's just kind of how it comes to me, and I like that track. I've been jamming the fuck out of it since you put it up. And yeah. so, you know, and yes, I did download it. So, you know, because it's, it's dope. Uh, to me, it sounds like an it's SEC track. <laughs> it sounds like something you guys would do. Yeah. So. Yeah, we trying to keep it real. We trying to, you know, you know, keep it the way that it should be, man. I'll say it like that. Right. Right now, I roll with my radio off. Oh, I'm yes. I'm not listening to if I'm not listening to my cousin's album, California Classic, which, by the way, I don't know why he don't do it, so I'm going to do it. Hmm. Y'all, check this out. He got an album sitting out there that's dope as fuck. I mean, if y'all motherfuckers really like this, what we did for y'all back in the days, and you like what Snoop and them did, and, um, you know, Breed, and, 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 and all your rappers that you love of that era back in them days, Go get that California Classics by Big Pride because you're going to get a mixture of all that, man. This is Pride doing it by himself solo. You can actually see what Big Pride, Mr. Hood Good, is doing on some solo shit. And I'm Big Have, and I'm endorsing this shit because this shit is dope. He got a lot of good features on that motherfucker, man. I mean, it's from top, from the first song to the last song. It's banging. Man, and it's getting hella good reviews, man, you know. But what we need is, you know, the fans stop talking about, you know, rap is this and it ain't going nowhere and all these watered-down rappers when you got a general, a SEC general right here just put one out there just for y'all, and y'all ain't going out there to people to copy. Y'all got to get out there and y'all got to cop this album because it is, the name says it all, California Classic. It's a classic from Big Pride. Get that shit, man, really. You know what? You just wet my appetite. I, I I will be getting that shit now. But you know what? We got the song up. Shit. We got the song up now, man, so we're going to play it. Buck em, buck em. So here we go. <laughs> Like, it's Cali, my nigga. You can't 
can't see us, nigga. The niggas don't know where a nigga gon' be. When a nigga touch down in the fucking SC, it's like, fuck em, fuck em. it's Cali, my nigga. Kennst du meinen Namen, Dr. Faustus, ich bin Gangster? Ja, du kennst ihn, denn du rennst von mir, du bist ein Rangstar. Fuck him, fuck him, du wirst von der Gang gefickt. Meine Posse kennt nur geisteskranke Killer wie Herr Dick. Du bist nichts, guck auf den Boden, wenn ich brech. Oder es gibt eine Klatsche, willst du, dass ich dich verletzt? Das Gesetz, durchgesetzt, du wirst durch die Stadt gehetzt. Regeln macht man auf der Straße, nächste Woche bist du weg. Ich kenn nur Killer, die nicht zögern, wie Space One. Ich bin ein Gigi, 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 Gangster. Mit dem Finger an dem Abzug hängen. Du willst nicht testen, wer der wahre G ist Auf der Straße habe ich einen Namen Und du bist der Bild eingerissen In mein Fleisch ist das Zeichen meiner Gang Meiner Post ist der Kartell Bin ein Teil dieser Fan OG Sag mir, was hast du alles gerissen Schreib es auf, gib es mir Und dann wird es weggeschmissen The niggas don't know where the niggas don't be When the niggas touch down in the fucking SC It's like It's Cali, my nigga You can't see us, nigga The niggas don't know where a nigga gon' be When a nigga touch down in the fucking SC It's like, fuck em, fuck em It's Cali, my nigga Fuck em, fuck em It's Harry Potter, G, nigga We have a prop, rap the tech We tell you, yeah, niggas next in grades Niggas like the guests Roll, modify, tip Holler, wait, nigga, play the max Leave a nigga flat The central, bangin' sick The quartet, roll Scrap, get the lean for a fact Pippin' pushin' Cadillac CC is the money stack Assassin, big prod, hat G'd up, black cats, bandanas, hold the straps, throw away the two stacks, shake them up, throw a crap, snake eyes, tatted back, stitched up, beanie caps with my loose tinted flat, house shoes stay fat, white tees overlap, overshadowing my strap, keep the khakis from the slack, low ride, bounce back, hit my switches in the black, bunny hop, on the max, serving quarter pound of jacks, motherfuckers stay strapped, you guess, clown serving heat, west direction, hit the street, platinum, SEC, I've been proud of your P, them niggas don't know where It's like, it's Cali, my nigga. You can't see us, nigga. The niggas don't know where a nigga gon' be. When a nigga touch down in the fucking SC, it's like, it's Cali, my nigga. It's Harry Potter, G, nigga. Leg dich besser nicht mit mir an, Dr. Jekyll, aggressiv. Das Kartell hinter mir, steck niemals ein Ruster schief. Ich laufe durch die Straßen, bin als Killer clean bekannt. Räume Dreck von der Straße mit der Pumpe in meiner Hand. Ich garantiere dir sehr viel Meinen Namen in dein Mund und schon beginnt dein Todesspiel Nimm den Lauf in deinen Mund und schmecke das Metall Situation aufgelöst, Trigger klickt, es gibt ne Zahl Check the Sniper, ist auch du, ich sammle jede Axt von Waffen Ganja kann dir gern mit Russen, die ihr jeden Busch beschaffen Habe eine frische Niere, tausche gegen ein paar Knarren Lasse Kugeln um mich fliegen, lass ein paar zur Hölle fahren Backen, backen, ich ficke jeden mit der Pump Wenn du dich gegen uns stellst, bleib dein Kopf gegen die Wand Hör tot Axen an der Seite, es ist die Gang hinter mir you know, man, I'll tell you, that just shows your guys' influence. I love to hear SCC on a track with some dudes rapping in German. <laughs> you, you know, you never thought. You got me over here dying. <laughs> <laughs> with what? <laughs> the shit I was saying off the air? <laughs> With what? With the stuff we were saying off the air, or the, or the, the what we were just saying just about the fusion? What you were just saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. SEC. Yeah. Well, it's true, man. I mean, it's it kind of shows you're in. I mean, damn, you hear dudes rapping in German, you can't understand a word of it, but then you hear giggity giggity gangsta, and you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's kind of dope. No, huh? And that, when, when that hits, you hear my voice, and then you know, then you hear a total other language. Right, right. I like that fusion. Yeah, I feel you. I understand how that can catch you off guard too. No, but it's beautiful, man. I love it. It's a it's a great fusion. I like the fact that you know two kinds of people you never thought would have come together mesh beautifully on a track. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I that's what I was thinking when, when we first originally done it. I was like. I wasn't even skeptical about it. Actually, Max, I said, let's do it, because I just thought Germany, a different language, you know, and then the German market, you know what I mean? Right. So, and let's do it, man. And I did it. You know, I did it with them, and, you know, they still my friends to this day. We we talk, we chat, you know. Wow. So, man, we'll do some other stuff one day in the future. 
You got another dude, man. I'm open to it all. You got another guy on your friends list, man. He's uh, he's from, I want to say Serbia. His name's D- Dukon Lok? Yeah, Dukon. Dukon, that's how you pronounce that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if it's... Yeah, that's my boy. That's my ace in the hole right there. We got our, um, we have a, a, a film, you know, crew together. It's me, him, my boy Boule, and my boy No Good. You know, we all work together. We shoot the film. I mean, and Red Run work with us, too. Um, from, they, you know, Red Run 781. From Bloods um, and Crips, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we all come together, man. You know, it's like Boule and Red Run from, they Bloods. They, they grew up with Bloods. And then me, No Good, we're Crips. We grew up on the Crip side, and then you have Dukon, who grew up way on the other side of the globe. <laughs> and we come together, and we, 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 we Boule and Red Rum, and we shoot the footage. We send some footage to Dukon. We get what he going to do with it, and he do some editing to it, and he send it back to us. We just work as a team, man, and as a producer, Dukon, too. He's a, he's a nice producer, too. He, he, he likes... He likes working with strings, and he, he gives you a whole new vibe, man. And, you know, for anybody out there looking to have some videos done, some graphic work done, look on my page. He's on my page. Get at him. You know, that's funny. He wants to be working with He's only getting better. He's getting better. Don't wait until he's he's up there working with the likes of my, um, uh, let's see, uh, who can I say? <laughs> Keisha Cole and somebody doing their album covers. You know what I mean? Get at him now. Yeah, yeah. Decon Law, Duco. Get at him now. He's good. He's patient. He does great business. He's a one hood uh, soldier. You know what I mean? Right. And it's all good, man. We doing this one hood thing. We are taking this worldwide, Max. We got to. It's we got, just we, we got we got to we got to rid this world of this bullshit that's going over. And if we can't, we got to give it our best shot. You know, it's funny, man, because I th- probably. Serbia is probably very similar to South Central. Kind of back to your one hood thing. That's exactly correcto mundo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Rough and tough. Man. That's why I tell people all the time, never think that it's just a South Central L.A. just in South Central L.A. This, this, these type of hoods and zones and whatever some people want to say ghettos or slums, whatever you want to call them, they exist all over the world. I was in Switzerland. We saw it out there. I was in France, Paris. We saw it out there. I was in England. We saw it out there. Well, London. We saw it out there. You know, I was in Chicago. Saw it out there. We saw it in um, uh, St. Louis. We saw it in Atlanta. We saw it in Swedeport. We saw it all over the world everywhere we went. You have these areas. And to... To, 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 to better these areas, we have to work with each other and work together. You know what I mean? Because we can and get things happening in those areas to provide some kind of monetary push in those areas, man. Because some people, like in Africa, certain parts of Africa, they don't have water. You know? And we, it's more, to me, it's just more things in the world bigger than certain shit that's going on today. It's just a bigger picture to me. You know what I mean? And I'm never going to be closed-minded to that small little 16-inch TV frame of a picture. Right. You know, I got I want my, my view to be big. I'm looking all over the world. If we can change, if I can, if we can change it here in California to a certain extent, it will progress to the next state, to the next city, to the next state, to the next city, and start eventually going overseas. But we have to try. Man, well, that's, you know, I think as Americans, we're very Americentric. And we forget that's true. that there's another whole, like when you're talking about ghettos in Switzerland, even to me, that's mm-hmm. making me go, oh, yeah, really? Ghettos in Switzerland? Yeah. You know, because all the time when we see, you know, the media, man, they show us all, they show us the rich people all the time. So you think everybody who lives in Switzerland is rich, which is some bullshit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Notice that, like the, the, they they show us stuff, a lot of stuff, rich stuff all the time, and then when they show certain, like certain elements, like I'll use Africa, but they always showing the rundown. You always see the baby with the flies all over their face. Right. But there's parts of Africa that's beautiful that look like you know downtown Atlanta, downtown LA when the lights come on. Hmm. It's beautiful, you know. But they don't show 
us that. Right, right. The mainstream media, they don't show us that. It's interesting how they twist it. But it's there and it exists. Like you're, everything in Europe or, you know, even certain parts of South America, they make it look great. But yet, you know, in exactly. other parts, Africa, like you were saying, man, you know, R- Rwanda, I'm sure there's some very rich parts of Rwanda, but fuck all we're going to see is like, you know, vultures flying around a dead kid's head or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they don't want us to go there. Yeah, for whatever reason. I'm going I'm, I'm to tell I'm going to enlighten somebody else. I mean, people right now, you can do this. Go online and go to, you can do several, do several major airlines and type in and see if you get a round trip ticket to China, to, let's say, Europe, Switzerland, uh, anywhere you want to. And then write down how much that round trip ticket is. And then go punch in Africa and get a round trip ticket to Africa. And you tell me how much that ticket is. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that would be an interesting exercise. Try that out. The difference in price is going to be damn near double. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and you guys you have. You could spend $1,500 and do a round trip to Switzerland. Yeah. But you to go to Africa, you're paying anywhere from twenty five to 3000 Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Why you don't have hear about a lot of people talking about going to Africa? Man, it, people talk about going all over the world. You never hear them say Africa. I mean, shit, hell, some people don't even know Egypt is in Africa. Shit. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. You know, well, we're very, like I said, very Americentric, man. If it doesn't go past our television, we don't believe it's real. You know. Yep. Exactly. So. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And the TV is definitely a sight. You know, man, I want to jump into an old. I want to jump into an oldie. This is now we're gonna see if this will work. <laughs> so we're gonna jump okay. into see you when we see you when I get out, which is. Um, That's what I was just talking to Pride about, and I said that was a dope song. I was just singing it. I was Max, man. We're, we're, we gonna, I guess we both live in a long time. Huh? We're yeah, same level. Same Pump same that. wavelength. Pump we're gonna jump into that right now. So hang on with us, and here we go. Every time I'm in the hood, I be reminiscing, thinking about my lopes, either dead or in prison. How we used to chop it up, how we used to kick it. It was kind of wicked to the streets, we was addicted. Get the pen and paper, start to write a letter. Dear OG, hope you're feeling a little better. I'm holding down a fort on the out, so I'm chilling. How's it going down? Are them suckers still feeling? I hear the horror stories, I know it's getting hectic. I felt the county blues and I put it on the record. Never saw the PNG, never want to see G. All my brothers locked down, doing a hard time. See, do you remember how we used to kick it home? Now you locked up and I'm feeling kind of low. Now my home is gone and I'm feeling kind of lonely. See, I miss my heart out low. Now my home is gone and I'm feeling kind of lonely. Damn, I really miss my home. Now my home is gone and I'm feeling kind of lonely. I can see, I miss my heart Saturday, walking to the swap meets jock in the yards, trying to run games like the Wizard of Oz. And I remember every single conflict we used to scrap when it wasn't even worth it. That's right, running out of stores with the four O's, getting cheated every day like the criminal. Hit our first joint, smoked our first cig, took our first squig, and it made us feel big. Though we both quit, it wasn't nothing but a pastime. Never confined, so we only walked a thin line. Sometimes I wonder why you and not me. You didn't say a word like a true homie. Now I'm on the block, and now you on the clock. Can't even take a shit without the coppers on your job. I'm feeling kind of bad, sitting in my pad. Knowing what I did, and it's driving me mad. I want to turn myself in, but you always tell me not to. So I'm a chill OG, and I'm a stay true. And when you hit the streets, I'm going to have your back fade. I'm getting paid and I'm making sure you set me. You didn't have to do the time for me, homeboy. But that's a true friend till the end, homeboy. I got so much love for my hood and my home. See you when you get out low. Now my home is gone and I'm feeling kind of lonely. See you when you get out low. Now my home is gone and I'm feeling kind of lonely. Damn, I really miss my home. 
You know, that's probably my favorite song on the Kicking Game album. That particular song. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> it's real. I mean, it, that's... No doubt about that one. About as, about as real as you can get. That one, and, and you had another track on there about falling in love with the homie's girlfriend or something like that. Only Lonely Homie. <laughs> Only Lonely, yeah, right. That's the one. That's another one that I thought was pretty nice. Was some good. Yeah, man, I always be trying to come up with slick little, little stories, man, you know, but it's real. Like, a lot of people actually relate to that because it's real shit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It happens. Well, you know, uh... Havoc, man, or, uh, yeah, Havoc the Mouthpiece was very ahead of his time, man. He actually, on there, he did a skit, which actually later turned into the Maury Povich show. <laughs> if you trip, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's funny. They may have, uh, Maury may have been guess listening. Guess dad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep, guess, guess the dad. Guess dad. <laughs> which is, is now a real show, you know? I mean, that's they love that's that real shit. shit now that you I never looked at it like that but you are right <laughs> it's you know <laughs> that's funny you know i i had a question for you though man because obviously you know we played this th there's another track i'm going to jump into here in a little bit which we played last time we had you on and it's uh i'm not going back right a and what well who was that again it was some different dude you're just on the hook but i guess you had some that's mick multi that's um that was a record I, I did called um, GNT, Gangsta Nation Truth, Get On Top. Oh. And uh, Mick Multi was one of the members of the group, Gangsta Nation Truth. Man. And yeah, you know, that's another one, another real one, man. You know, I had did the track, and I basically told him what I wanted him to, you know, to write about. Well, I liked. I pretty much assigned that to him. He did a damn good job. So I'm saying, I like the track. Did you guys do more of that, or is, did that ever become a full album, or is that just a one song? Yeah, we did that whole album, man. But what happened with that was, honestly, man, I did that album maybe, man, I would say five years ago. Huh. Or more. It was 2008 and, um, we played that. Yeah, I did it a long time ago. Well, no, let me re reach. Let me re re reach. I, I got the deal to do the project with some people way back then, and um, originally it was supposed to be like some kind of a greatest hits record. Mm. And then um, something happened, man, where some people did a pirate version of a of a South Central Cartel greatest hits record, Ooh. and it messed up a. I had got a situation with these cats to do a South Central Cartel Greatest Hits project, but some people ended up pirate version of a Greatest Hits, and it messed up the oh. release of the SCC Greatest Hits. So I ended up redoing the situation with them to just make a new record, which was the Gangsta Nation Truths project. Huh. And, um, you know, just another situation where, man, I did the record, was ready to go with it but they weren't necessarily ready at that time and i ended up doing that record three or four times before they actually put it out oh damn upgrading it because it kept time will go by time will go by then it'll get old you know what i mean to me right right so, so i ended up redoing that album like three or four times before they finally put it out and then when we finally put it out everybody was damn tired of it <laughs> like not tired <laughs> of the record but the business part right. the, the the it just was a waste of my time the record is dope as hell though i know well that's i like it it has a great very record great great project the whole album is dope man it's just it was pretty much like a waste huh well i've i actually i'd like to hear that whole record because i like i do like the i'm not going back track that's uh you know it's really taking it yeah, back man, to old I got school that record <clears throat> man I got it somewhere. It's on iTunes, too, I'm sure. But I, I'm sure I got it somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I'm going to have to gotta check it out. through the crates. Is it, uh, is it on Amazon? It should be everywhere. Amazon everywhere, man. Hmm. Okay. Gangster Nation Truths. I will uh, I will try to see if I can find it because I now, you know, that one track kind of wet if my not, appetite. Just let me know. I'll figure. I'll find it and send, send you a link to it, man, because I definitely got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere. Hey. You know what I mean? I got it. Now, I have everything somewhere. 
which, I, I, like I said, it had a very traditional gangster sound to it, man. This wasn't, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, I, like that's that's like what Ryan Sun was saying about my California classic record. Right. That also has a very traditional gangster sound. I, I I did a I tried hard to keep it classic. Man, I uh, now you got me you know, interested. I worked hard to keep it with that that vintage, that vintage gangster rap '90s vibe. Man. Well, and I did the same thing with the the California the um, Gangster Nation Truths have a few of the new at that time what was cracking in the, in the music business, right. which I don't, I don't remember what it was at that time, but it was a different sound that was coming in or or coming out playing out at the time. But I got a couple of those on the Truths, but on the um, the record I just released is pretty much full of classic vibes. Hmm. classic gangster rap vibes that's pretty much all that, that i wanted to put on that record that's what i miss is that kind of music you know that that's gangster rap to me not you know not rapping about jewelry yeah, and clubs sure. you know i mean some people I, I look at music man right now as as we speak man as i i, I was telling somebody today man if you making music if you're in the music business right now you may as well do what you love to do because ain't nobody selling no damn records no more <laughs> so you may as well pretty much do what you love instead of doing what you think people are gonna buy right right exactly well that's... they're not buying it <laughs> Well, and that's where they make the mistake. I think they think they're going to get a Grammy or something. Some of these kids, man, they're exactly. really. I, you might see it on your friends not list. going to happen, man. Make I, what you love. Do what your heart say. And, you know, I think when you when you do things strictly from the heart, from a pure place, and it ain't about the money. I mean, of course we get to a point in, these, in this business where it becomes about the money. But I think in a lot of ways those days then kind of came and went where you get in this and i mean don't get me wrong even though we can sit here and scream about how crappy the music business is every year several artists come out and make millions of dollars oh yeah yeah some like miracle happens and there's a new artist that comes out and conquers the game you know what i mean and becomes a a big giant million multi-million selling artists or something but that's very very rare right right so well, i think most artists should just focus on the craft of making great music and people need to start focusing also on making great sounding music now <laughs> yeah Take a little extra time to make sure that the sonic part of it is good as well as the music that you're putting on it and the lyrics that you're saying over the music that's the thing, man. You got rappers that can't even rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, they ain't rap at all, and they popular as hell. Yeah, or you got other rappers trying to emulate that because it's they think it's easy. You know, I I see plenty of right. it. So, but you know that makes it even worse when you have a a dope rapper that actually can rap, but he's doing something stupid because he's trying to be hip. Yeah. <laughs> in whatever's in like i'm a, you know i hate to keep using this young guy as an example but like young thug for instance oh god <laughs> can't understand the damn word this kid's saying man but i see a lot of rappers now doing the same thing he does <laughs> yeah because that's what they make the music bid that's what the record labels turn it into because it's like oh that's what's hit that's popular so we want that i mean it's not no more where you go and create something brand new and fresh and the record label's going to take you and develop that and and they're going to grow you into a popular artist they don't do that no more they want you to come to them you got to already have a million followers on you know what I mean? YouTube, YouTube hits and Twitter followers, and you got to have all that already built in. So basically, you got to come to them as an established artist. Right, right. Yeah, pretty much. And you have your sign fan base. You give you crumbs and take all the money they make off of your hard work. They'll take your fan base too. Yeah, they're gonna take that too. 
<laughs> Whatever but, they, if your fan base is real. Well, that's it, too. A lot of rappers don't really have a fan base. Like, you know, SCC has a fan base. You know what I'm saying? Those who love you Yeah, we got, a, we got the solid, through the years of being in this business, followers that, that really follow us. But, you know, out of, you know, they say if you have 100,000 people that follow you on a certain particular social network, you can only expect 5 to 10% of them to actually buy or purchase what you're selling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, So, you know what I mean? When you start doing the math, <laughs> you know, you, you may as well make music you love. <laughs> you may as well do it because you love it. Well, some because people, some people. You, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, because if you do it for any other reason than that, you're going to upset yourself. You're going to be disappointed. <laughs> you, you know what? I see that. I'm sure you do on your friends list. Like, you'll see these rappers. One day they're putting up videos and trying to promote the fuck out of them. And the next day, you know, talking shit. You know, fuck this music game. It's bullshit. Fuck my fans. Fuck this. Fuck that. You know? Exactly. They're getting all thug exactly, Because they put them records out, and then they don't sell no units. They look at their they iTunes, they look at their CD Baby sell sheet, and ain't no units being sold. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult. I, I don't know how many records you can sell off of Facebook, particularly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, if Facebook is the place where you're going to sell records at. Most of them don't even care about because selling look at records. The competition there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everybody on Facebook. Well, and usually it's just they want you to hear their music. That's the other thing. A lot of times they're just tagging you in these fucking SoundCloud links or YouTube links, and you know, yeah, what, man. And what's the deal with the mixtape? Yeah, I think the mixtape is kind of playing out. It's kind of falling to the wayside. It's still out right now, but it's getting less and less relevant. And, you know, really to me, I don't think, I'm almost at a point where I don't think it almost makes sense to even make albums no more. Yeah. You know, I think you're probably better off making songs. Yeah, yeah. That's what Cause, you know. I did. I did a lot of work on the California Classic Record. Did a lot of work, put a lot into it, and then. Two days after I put it out, it was already all over the internet for free. Oh shit! So when you, when you think about it, man, you know when you put so much into something, and then you put that out to the world, and then the world take it for free. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? You know, yeah. because the game right now is really all about the free stuff. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, so many artists that are, you know, really in right now they may give music away for free so it's not about the music has no value the actual music has no value so it's almost like here take this for free right right and then come see me in my show <laughs> well what would be the allure of being a rapper then so like in your guys case why would you even continue doing it if that's well, when we got into it, it was you know a different attitude about it. It wasn't like now. Like if I was here right now trying to do it, I couldn't tell you that I still wouldn't want to do it. <clears throat> but I think you know there's a different. Um, the game is so different now, man. You know, even artists like us, we're trying to figure out how to uh, maximize. Right. You right. know what we doing and actually reach who we need to reach to sell some actual records. Hmm. But I don't know, you know, right now why somebody would choose this as a career. <laughs> to be <laughs> honest with you, hmm. we've been in it so long, it ain't no second option. Right, right. But, you know, if I was if I was to tell a youngster, I'd tell a man, go to college, get you a degree in something else. And, you know, if you want to do this music on the side, and do that on the side. And if it mess, if it, if you luck up and it becomes so lucrative for you as a side thing that is taking care of you for real, then jump into it with both feet. But that's the best advice for any up and coming um, artist. Right. Right. Yeah. Make sure you have a real job, a real career. Man. Yeah. Because yeah. if you make this your career. 
the chances are that you're not going to be successful. <laughs> Well, you know, I think they still, the media still sells people dreams, man. And, you know, you look at Drake and they oh, think, I could do that. Definitely. I mean, look at all of the reality TV shows. And, you know, you look at all these whack reality TV shows. I call them the unreality show because ain't none of that shit real. <laughs> no. But, um, you know, they, they glamorize and everything. And it's all about, you know. Yeah. Just stupidity. You know, it's, yeah. hey. so it's like, you know, you're dealing with you're dealing with situations where, you know, people are being sold the same dreams, you know what I mean, that they've been selling them, but it ain't the same. No. You can't reach them like you used to be able to. The hip-hop stars of today are the reality stars. <laughs> it's really not yeah. the people that are selling records, because ain't nobody selling many of those records. No. No, the show pieces, man. Even the people you think selling records ain't selling records. You feel me? Right, right. It's a show piece. It's like he looks like he's selling records. He's not selling records. Exactly. You know? You better, but he really ain't. Better have another talent. Well, you know, I, I want to jump into this. Uh, I, I'm not going backtrack. You know, this is a solo joint that you did with, um, with uh, who was That's Mick Multy. Mick, Mo Mick Multy, that's right. So we're going to jump into this real quick, and we'll come right back after that and talk to you some more. So here we go. All right, for sure. I ain't going back. Opposite direction. Put your arms behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Spread your feet apart. I'm going to apply pressure to your fingers. I don't want you to move. Do you have any weapons or sharp objects on your person that are going to poke me? Nothing at all. And if niggas talk shit, I give them a my nigga from Fudge Town, the ticket on that chronic, I need to know now. Dipping through hoods, I gotta keep it moving. Unlike Smokey, no time for cruising. Riding dirty with a throwaway Glock. Two strikes, plus the block is hot. Hard racing, paranoia's automatic. All for the money, and it's life of bad habits. No cell phone, FBI's tapped it. I can't go home, cause my name is classy. Quavo sipping, dipping through traffic. Police on my heels, Crips loking me on. Bloods in the streets yelling, go on, nigga, go. On. Blowing through stop signs, I gotta get gone. Nowhere to run, the ghetto got me trapped. Trying to take my freedom, I ain't going back. Flip off the bird, toss the pine out the window. My vision blurred, hoping I don't hit nobody standing on the curb. 60 miles an hour, running like smoking herb. Cheering like I'm OJ, about to strike out. Tigers on flat, the gas running out. The judge want my freedom, fuck them. Ride on the tray where I lead them, ditch them, huh? Jump off the tray, hit a few gates. Dodge a couple of pit bulls, see a yellow tape. Gotta get away. Leaking my chuck trip, a nigga short of breath. I fucked up my hip. Hop in the shed, get a bird hovering. They letting out the dogs on the G that's struggling. Nowhere to run, the ghetto got me trapped. Won't take me alive. And hoping they don't hear me breathing These are fucking dogs They gon' smell me bleeding Rip up my white tee Use it for gauze Use it to wipe the sweat Praying to God Got myself in it Just stay calm Deep breaths every second Heart beating like a drum They right here behind me Hear them talking Please let these motherfuckers Keep on walking For some reason They called off the 
search. First thing I'm looking for, that cush perk. Playing in the G's game where it ain't no rules. I'm stuck in the hood where most G's lose. Nowhere to go, the ghetto got me trapped. Call up my moms, I ain't going back. Man, that's very grassroots gangster shit. You know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's I, I'm I like that man. It's very it like early '90s feeling. That's why I, you know, you took it back, man. And that dropped in what 2007, yeah. 2008. That's exactly what I was trying to do. I mean, I try to do that as often as possible, man. I mean, you know, I feel like because of the fact I was part of that, I can you know dip back into that at will. Right. Right. Well, and that's good and because some of that. you're doing the right thing because obviously you're not trying to make new fans. You know, you're trying to keep your existing fans happy. Yeah, you know, man, I have a lot of fans that um, my inbox stay lit with people saying, please don't change. Please keep doing what you do. Right. You know, I mean, you know, and I feel like that's great on a certain level as far as that goes but you know sometimes trying to keep it real with your fans or stay keep them happy it, it stagnates you and get you stuck in the corner yeah that's true and it, it don't allow you to grow and experiment and do things that you want to do right right so it's a very delicate balance there man well you know and you could grow there's a way to grow as an artist but yet keep you know keep yourself yourself you know what i'm saying yeah, I mean, not going way left to where you're selling out and doing something corny. Right, right. But uh, you know, but at the end of the day, like me, man, I feel like, you know, in a lot of ways, man, I feel like at, at certain points in my career, I felt like there were certain things that I couldn't do. Hmm. You know, I remember um, doing certain songs, and we would take them songs. Like, this is during after the Def, Def Jam era. And we was trying to do songs to get back on, like do some stuff to get really, really back out there, right? Right. And we would do a certain song and take it to the radio, and the radio would look at us and say, man, this ain't no SCC. Now, how the <laughs> hell are you going to tell an SCC what's SCC? <laughs> right. So <laughs> but to them, it might have been a little too radio-ish. Really? Current sounding. So, so how, how do you grow if you are old school group and they keep you old school? How do you become, how do you keep up with your career? You know what I mean? Keep it where you, you know, keep up with the, with the business per se. If you're not allowed to um, experiment and try new things and it's going to be accepted. Sometimes it's not accepted. So you hmm. pretty much end up stuck in a certain, in a certain space and time. Well, you know, you do, like I said, you have a fan base, man. Your fan base is diehard. <laughs> you know, you guys built one, and, you know, they're going to love you, man, and this is what you do. And I ain't mad at those those fans at all because, you know, they've been able to, we've been able to flow, flow through the game for, for a long time, almost 30 years here. Right, right. So... so I definitely got love for every single one of our diehard fans. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that might be what people mean sometimes if they see you trying to change up. You know, they're used to you sounding a certain way. And like I said, there's a way you can still evolve without, you know, going completely down south, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, that was what was happening. A lot of the West Coast rappers were starting to sound like they was from Atlanta. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't have in that. They just didn't want to hear that. Matter of fact, that Cali Fag District or whatever they're called. Um, <laughs> or, Cali Swag. It's Cali Swag. Yeah, something Swag District or whatever. <laughs> Cali Swag District. Actually, I call them the Cali Fag District. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they, they sound, you know, I thought they were from like Atlanta or, you know, somewhere like that. But apparently they're right out of Inglewood, man. Yeah, for real. And, I mean, you know, they had they, they had their moment, you know, where they had that song. And it was a big hit and blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of that stuff is so um, – certain kind of music don't have that staying power, though, you know? And it I doesn't. Will, I will, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, if I'm still around 25, 30 years from now, what music is popular from today. You know, I'm very curious. That's true. Like, what's see what's gonna still be around from? I don't think none of it will. Maybe, given maybe a Kendrick Lamar or or J Cole, right? You know, or certain chosen underground artists that still make relevant sounding music. Might be some Eminem stuff. Eminem will be remembered. I think. Well, Eminem is is forever. Right. Right. Eminem is forever. Like he'll never he'll never go out of style. But you know what I mean? He's a he's a real one. Right, right. I definitely ain't talking about him. Right. But I mean from this era. Oh yeah, the new guys that are popping out. Eminem come from the old era and he's still cracking. Right, right. He's still re- relevant. <clears throat> I'm talking about these new artists, man. I like the um who 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 would I be saying? Like Y G or maybe um you know, I don't even know these guys. <laughs> exactly. Man. Yeah, none of them. I, like, who? Who? You know? Who's really popping? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't even know who who it is, man. That's popping. To me, the last official gangster rapper was Game. Yeah, yeah. That's well. His thing though is is he liked to diss everybody, man. That was kind of how he built his name. And yeah, yeah. But I mean, before he started that. Right. Oh, okay, okay. So, you like, know, his first album, you know, Game was an official gangster rapper, man. Like, he was official. He knew who came before him. He had respect for those that came before him. He was like, he was what a gangster rapper supposed to be. Right, right. Before he started getting into all of the diss and then got caught up in all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Man. Now, you know, a lot of artists is just trying to keep up with what's cracking, and they're not making the kind of music that's really from the heart no more. It's just making music. Right. It's just making noise. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, but I think he was the last official gangster rapper. That's Probably my so. personal opinion now. There may be somebody else that came out that I haven't heard. Right, right. Well. But as far as, like, one of the last few that really blew up big. And today, you know, like I say, I like Kendrick Lamar music. I like J. Cole music. You know, I like Wale a little bit. You know, I don't think Meek Meek Mill was horrible. I don't really listen to him. I don't even know who that is. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't dis, I don't dis what Drake do. I don't listen to it. Right. You know, there's artists out here that's doing things. I don't necessarily listen to them, but I know who they are. Right, right. Because, you know. You know, I've heard of them. You know what I mean? Like, they're big artists. You can't not hear I mean, you know who that is. Right, right. But, I mean, as far as the kind of music that I dig, <laughs> well, right now I can only really listen to, like, a Kendrick Lamar and, uh, you know, chosen few other artists. It's kind of like Half says, my radio stays off, you know, <laughs> if, if I hear well, something. I, agree. I don't even listen to the radio, dude. I don't watch TV. I don't listen to the radio. I'm in, I'm doing, I'm in my studio making my own music. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you got to do, man. It's you know? kind of sad, but it's the way things are. Well, you know, we got a few minutes left, man, so I want you guys to spit out any relevant information, like where people can go get your music, you know, whatever you want people to know right now. It's time to time to go ahead and, and spit well, man, havoc ain't here havoc had to make a quick run so i know in regards to havoc um you know right now havoc is in the midst of the big one hood movement that he have okay um and that's cracking from what i see that's cracking i can't really get too deep into it because i don't know all that information 
but I know that's becoming something big for him. Okay, okay. Um, he's working on a solo album. I don't know what the, what's the title, but I know he got a Havoc, you know, Big Havoc solo project halfway finished or maybe even more than halfway finished that's dropping. And, you know, I'm sure he got a lot of other stuff going on, but he ain't here to tell us that. <laughs> that's kind of funny, man. He broke out right you during know? the interview, huh? <laughs> yeah, he had, I guess he had to go handle some business. Okay. But, um, you know, as I said before, man, I actually have a, a album out, California Classics, right now. But I'm in a – because my record got bootlegged so early on, I kind of stopped pushing it. Okay. And I'm redoing it a little bit. So I added some songs to it, and I just shot the first video for it. So I'm kind of finna put, re-release it, and it's going to be, you know, California class reloaded. Okay. And I'm adding some songs to it, and I'm just going to come back and, and try to push it a little harder off the top so I don't get shitted on like I did last time. Man, well, you know what? I think both that you guys... Me off, man. I thank both you guys for coming on, spending some time with us, and uh, we'll do it again. So uh, thanks again for coming on, dude. Man, appreciate you, man. Absolutely. And the rest of you fuckers, I'm Maxwell Silverhammer, and that's the story there, bitches. See ya. Show.